tonight, having looked at this morning and shared on the first of the three areas, the, the Redeemer, as the sister said, uh, my mission was to impress upon you that in the face of all of the craziness, from the beginning, when darkness stalked the earth and there was chaos, God always intervened. He always, you see that in Genesis 1, he intervened. And what is amazing, he continued that trend throughout the ages. He did it with Mo He did it with Israel in the time of Moses. He did it with Noah. He did it with Lot. And then he did it with Israel when Jesus Christ came on the scene. You see, when Jesus came, Jesus made us know that God loves us. Say, love, love us. You see, if you don't know that God loves you, you're going to find yourself missing out on a great deal of his love. How many of you here have, have wives? Nice. How many of you have husbands? How many of you fellas here looking for a wife? Hey, put up your hand, by. How many of you girls here looking for a husband? Here tonight. And some of you are going in the back. You ain't going to find a husband in the dark, you know. Anytime you're looking for a man in the dark, you're in trouble. It's one kind of man that's preventing the darkness. All right? But I want to tell you tonight that God continues as Redeemer. And I shared with the folks that I should share it with you. We miss out on the awesomeness of what God has for us as Redeemer for the simple reason we caught sin. And sin separates us from God. Amen? And I don't have to tell you, 1 John 5, 17 makes it quite clear that all wrongdoing is sin. And you know when you're doing wrong. Amen? From the time you used to go and steal the little milk and sugar, the little cookies, you know it wrong because soon as mommy come here, run, not so. You knew then all wrongdoing is sin. Even when you take your first kiss, unmarried, you know us. But I knew one guilty of that, were you? <laughs> but at the end of the day, there is an answer. And it's simply found in Ezekiel 18.30, which simply said that we are to repent. Say repent. And that is to turn away from once you turn away from and you get back in that right place with God, you are now positioned to experience part two, God as revealer. Amen? So tonight we're going to talk about God as revealer. I just want to ask the guys to assist me here. We are going to be looking at Colossians 1.19. Uh, let, let's start with 1.15 as we try to understand God as the revealer. Jesus Christ as the revealer. That's Colossians 1.15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? That's Jesus we are talking about. Say, that's Jesus we are talking about. That's who Jesus represents. He represents the invisible God. Once we encounter Jesus, we encounter God. And that's for your Muslim friends. Those people who just want to see Jesus Christ as a prophet. No, 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 no. Jesus Christ is God. And my friends, I feel good about you here tonight. Because I don't really think you came here to see mess Blessed Messenger. Or hear me. You came for an encounter with Jesus Christ. And the word of God says that who is the image of the invisible God, whenever you encounter Jesus Christ, you have encountered God. Are you hearing me, somebody? And I just want to suggest, having looked at that, look at verse 15 now, Colossians 1, 15. God's going to sweeten us up tonight with some nice information. So we're looking at verse 19 now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. That is, in Jesus should all fullness dwell. Which means that it pleased God that his son Jesus should have all his fullness. So, Pastor Andy, when Jesus came on earth, he received an infilling. 
When I minister, and when the time is right, I find coming out of my mouth these words, be filled, be filled. As I say, be filled, the fullness of the presence of God comes down on the individual. It is that same fullness that Jesus received from his father, and we who are his disciples, we are now positioned to pass it on. Are you hearing me? I was listening earlier today from a, 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 a sermon, and I heard a gentleman say something very interesting. He said that those who went out as Jesus' apostles, they were his disciples. Are you hearing me? You see, sometimes we want big title, but we fail to have the humility to realize we still follow someone. His name is Jesus. Sometimes we become so full of ourselves when we take all of these long titles that we forget we are still disciples of the servant of servant Jesus. And if you are following Jesus, you too must follow in servant mode. You too must follow in humble mode. Are you hearing me, somebody? Young people, this is for you. See, the problem with young people, and you will be the first to admit, because we, we travel that road. As soon as you get a little anointed, from the time you do so, you're hitting somebody in the head and they fall along. Well, you feel you, God, you're ready now. You're ready. You want people to call you a prophet. Young, young, young. Don't, don't, don't. I remember once I was in a church, and this young man, he had to be just in his early 20s. He got obliged to preach in the church. And my boy bongs in the church. You ever see um, the picture with um, coming to America? When the guy coming in here, dun, 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 boom, dun, 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 boom. And this fella had regalia and he had about four armor bearers. We do with four armor bearers. I want to tell you that once you see you for Jesus, you must walk in humility. Amen, people. So this is it. Jesus, the first thing I want you to know is that Jesus Christ, who you follow, he is filled with the Spirit of God. And the other thing I want you to know, that God was his father. Amen? God was his father. In, in John 14, 19, we, we, Jesus made it quite clear. Whoever sees me has seen the father. Are you hearing me? Whoever has seen, uh, uh, whoever has seen Jesus has seen the father. So whoever has experienced Jesus has experienced it. They have experienced God. Have you experienced Jesus, anybody here? It's so show hands. Well, then you've experienced God. You've, put your hands together for God. Hallelujah. Jesus is wonderful. The first thing that Jesus brought to the earth that revealed his father was love. Say love. It's interesting that I think it's in 1 John 4, 8. We appreciate the word speaks that God is love. But what has struck me so awesomely in John 13, 34, 35 is this. And perhaps we should look at that. Perhaps we should look at that. Uh, John uh, 13, 34, and 35. Because out of that, we would appreciate the awesomeness of God's desire, Jesus' desire, that we promote love in our very lives. Is it there? A new command, month I give unto you, that ye love one another. What should you do? He didn't say cheat on one another. He did not say be rude to one another. He did not say to ignore one another. He said to do what? Love one another. As I have loved you. Somewhere I read some time ago, that the beautiful thing about Jesus, whatever Jesus spoke, he lived. Did somebody hear that? Jesus promoted love and he lived love. He promoted peace and he lived peace. Imagine a man slap you on your cheek on the right and, and you tell him it's, it's all right, hit me on the left. Like one time I went to the dentist and boy, this man, he really roughed me up in terms of, uh, it, it was a little kind of rough. So <laughs> the next day I went to him, I said, Doc, 
I was rapping now. He said, well, boy, <laughs> a man of your stature <laughs> would turn the next cheek. <laughs> you know what he said? Since you are a man of God, since you are a Christian, you ain't but about that, you know what I mean? It's part, of the, it's part of the journey. And it is part of our journey. Sometimes we don't like people to tell us, boo, we want to fight. But God tests the exact the extent to which you really trust him. And I'll tell you this. Anytime you are in a place, young people, where you are not looking for a fight, you will always win. Because it is God who fights your battles. When you try to fight your battle, you always make a mess. Do you agree? People who feel you stupid, there's not a rock, a, a, a boy, Enough respect. You see, he ma he's serious, boy. He different. He different, boy. He real, boy. They respect you. But if you want to fight people for everything, you're missing it. Are you hearing me? You see, this God that we are talking about, this Jesus Christ, he lived what he preached. Several years ago, a young woman said something to me. I think I shared this morning. Be careful of the life you lead. For you are the only Bible some people may ever read. That's for my partner there. My partner playing with the sideburn. This one for you. Be careful of the life you lead. For you are the only Bible. Some people may ever read. They are not going to be impressed. By carrying around this big Bible. Or you have your cell phone. Hallelujah. And with your cell phone, you go pull it out from time to time and quote some scripture. They are impressed about that. They are impressed about you. The truth you speak, do you live it? The love you speak, do you live it? The extent to which you claim you care about people, do you indeed care? I'll tell you, a lot of women today, they don't have their husbands in church because the Bible just say right. A lot of young people, your partner in school and your friend in the office there, on Jesus because they're looking at you. Amen? And it all comes together by appreciating that God is love and he speaks love. Um, verse 35, that's a boss verse. He said, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. All the fighting in the church does not say that Jesus is Lord. In fact, Jesus says, Father, I pray that they will unite as one so that they will know that I came from the Father. That's what unity in the church is all about. Evidence that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, is indeed God himself. Amen? So the extent to which we keep quarreling and fighting and cutting up and undermining we are undermining the church. And it doesn't speak well for us as kingdom people. So that's the first thing that Jesus revealed to us. That is love. The second thing is kindness. You see, Jesus Christ speaks to us about kindness and he lived kindness. Jesus, God's greatest kindness to the world was to extend his love by sending his one and only begotten son. What he has done is to impress upon us that this Jesus that is in us, this is God speaking to us, this Jesus brings us love. And once we live this love, we 
project him. We project God. Are you hearing me? But then the wonderful thing about God is this. He did not just settle with this one-time act. You know, as human beings, we like these one shots of love to people. And sometimes you fall for it. A guy sees a young woman, he's interested in her. He wants that bad. So he buys her a bunch of roses. And she never gets another one. Or better yet, if she does not have an understanding of her value, he buys a box of KFC and brings it to work. And she loves that. Or to make it even worse, he buys a little bling, a little small chain, a little thing, and dies. Are you hearing me? But God is not like that. Once God has impressed upon us that he loves us, it's a forever love. Are you hearing me? And I want to give you evidence of this. When Jesus came on earth, the first act of love was to die for us. And when he died, before he died, he promised us the Holy Spirit. Not so. And the Holy Spirit turned up at Pentecost. And from there, we saw the awesome power of God. But it did not stop there. We were then exposed to grace. Say grace. When we were exposed to grace, what we were exposed to is unmerited favor from God. How many of you here have had favor from God? My God. Favor that you know you did not deserve. Let me see all the married men. Show your hands again. How many times your wife gave you unmerited favor? Favor that you don't deserve. You treated them rough. You didn't want the help in the house. You're coming home and they still gain your favor. How many of you fellas never get the unmerited favor? Show hands. Hands down. <laughs> but that's, that's flesh. But Jesus Christ gives us unmerited favor. That is grace. The grace that God has given us is to help us to survive through this life. And that's one of the reasons, brother, why we stick with Jesus. Because when we least expect somebody, Jesus turns up. How many of you here have seen Jesus turn up when you thought all was lost? Show hands. Oh, my God. Quite a testimony. Let's put our hands together for this. Jesus. And you know what I love about Jesus? Jesus is a suddenly Jesus. Just at Pentecost, they said that suddenly there was this great song from heaven. Remember that? And then there was a the manifestation of speaking in tongues and the like. He's a suddenly God. Sometimes, young men, you might have been for a long time wondering when you will get a girlfriend. And then suddenly, someone turns up. I see my boy watching me with a smile. Is, has you been, did you have that suddenly experience? Oh, my goodness. Well, my, you know, from the time I see how the face light up, like Christmas night, face light up. I say he had a suddenly experience. I know some people. I think I also had a suddenly experience. And I thank God for this day. Got a beautiful wife for 32 years. But I want to tell you this. That the thing about this, this grace is that this grace is powerful. This grace is not just to help us to do things. Uh, uh, somebody will help you across the road or, or a taxi will turn up when you need one. I want us to look at Zechariah. Every time I read this text, I am blown by it. Zechariah 4.8. That's when we are being reminded. Yes, yeah, Zechariah for it. Yeah, you can look for it in the meantime, because your version might be different, but saying the same thing. Zechariah for it. 
what I love about this scripture is that it shows us that when God's on the move, he is on the move. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, let's move to the next verse. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. And then he goes on to the next verse. For who hath despised that they are small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Now, what is interesting about this text is this. That Zerubbabel had a, they had this wall to build. And they were reminded that is not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit. And then, actually, when the spirit came, the spirit came expressing it in the words grace. He spoke grace, grace upon the mountain. He said, you can remove any mountain by shouting grace. And sometimes... We need to understand by just, first of all, appreciating grace for what it is. Almost as a person, we could get things done. Once we look to the grace of God, but we must believe. How many of you, when you pray, you believe? Come on. How many of you, when you pray, you believe? How many of you, when you pray, you know and you know and you know without a doubt it's already done? then grace can do it. All of this speaks to the goodness of God. Amen? It speaks to the love of God. I, while I was sitting there, as part of this goodness of God, I remembered that the greatest goodness, the greatest kindness of God was salvation. Amen? Salvation. And all we need to do, as Romans Ten night says, is to confess with our lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead and we shall be, we shall be, how many people here are saved? Show hand. Beautiful. How many people here are not saved? Show hand. Uh, what a nice group of people. All you have work to do. There is, I told them this morning, is rash or T.I.? A rasta man that led me to the Lord, you know, in the Piparo forest. A rasta man. I ain't say you are no rasta man. But you have the potential. And I'll tell you now why. Why you have that potential. Do you know you have a ministry? How many of you here know that you have a ministry? Yeah, we have a ministry. And there's one big ministry. It's the number one ministry. And this ministry, let's look at 2 Corinthians 5.18. 2 Corinthians 5.18, there's a ministry that we have. I want us to look at. Second Corinthians 5.18. But he found it. Wow. And all things are of God. Say all things are of God. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Who reconciled us, people? Who reconciled us to God? Who reconciled us to God? Who brought us back to God? But it does not stop there. Hear what happens next. And had given to us the ministry of reconciliation. That means we have a ministry to reconcile others to God. Amen? So I was not being rude just now. I was just reminding you and I of what is our ministry. We should, wherever possible, lead people to Jesus Christ. 
I was in Argentina some time ago, a few years ago, and I was introduced to this four-step approach. It's called Luke 10, 5, 8, and 9. If you do it over a period of time. The first thing you do when you identify someone is that you pray peace. All right, Luke 10, 5, you pray peace because that's what the word said. When Jesus entered the house, he did what? He prayed peace. I don't want you to feel that I write that. Just look at Luke 10. Because I, I want you to leave here with the knowledge that when you leave here, you could change your life. Amen? Just as Rash Shorty, I changed my life. A Rasta man, there's a life you can change. I was reading while they're trying to find the text. Oh, it's there. Shahrukh Khan, that outstanding actor and sponsor of the TKR, saying that he doesn't see himself as a businessman. He sees his real role in this life to show love. Say wherever he can impact lives, he, that's where he's at. And that should be our role. And the greatest love we can show to humanity is to lead them to Jesus. Amen? So let's look at that first step. The first thing, and into whatsoever house he enter, first say, peace be to this house. By the way, the body being the temple of the Holy Ghost is also a house. Amen? So the first thing you do, you pray peace on an individual. Then the next thing is that you pray peace. And let's move on to verse 8 now. And whatsoever city you enter and they receive you, Eat such things as are set before you. Your fellowship. Amen? How many of you have won people to Jesus because you started to hang out with them? Show your hand. Nice. It works. So the first thing you do what? Pray what? And that might take about a week, two weeks. It might take two months. But like changing the gear of a, of a vehicle, you will know when the time is right to go to the next level. That's when they want to hang out with you. All right? Then you go to the third step, verse 9. Let me read the text and then I'll, and heal the sick that are therein. So when you come to Knox, you, you, you meet a felt need, something that somebody needs. Say felt need. Wow. That's where it opens the door for people to want to know Jesus. I know for a fact. That once you meet a person, sometimes we don't give people felt need. We give them what we want to give them. A person might just want somebody to talk with. They might want something to, to, to just a shirt, a t-shirt. Or they might want some help with some math and they'll never forget you. And what's interesting when you, even we as believers, if we are worth our salt, how many of you have ever prayed for someone here, an old believer, and they got healed. Show hands. Nice. Once you see that happen, the first thing they ask is, where's your church? That's their indication. That's their idea that you know God. They want to know where's the church. Uh, 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 people want to know that you've met their need, not your need, their need. Amen? And the fourth thing is that right in that same verse, the kingdom of God is come now you, which simply means you tell them about the kingdom. Amen? You tell them that Jesus is coming soon. Are you hearing me? So, sister, there are four things. You did such an excellent job on the path. The first, wherever you go, might be a neighbor. Spend some time, pray peace. Then what time do you, what, what do, you do next? Fellowship with them. What do you do next? Huh? Meet a felt need. And then what do you do for it? Tell them that the kingdom of God is at hand. I taught for 30 years. Let me see if I still have it. What's the first thing you do? Everybody. What's the first thing you do? What's the second thing you do? What's the third thing you do? And what's the fourth thing you do? Tell them that the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. And you would bring somebody to the Lord. Put your hands together for that four-step approach. You can't say you can't do it now because nobody told you. But there's an even shorter one. Sweeter, you could do this in a maxi. 
It's called the three-story approach. The first thing you do, you listen to their story. You ever go in a car, Max, or in, at work and somebody just only laying down all the troubles on you? Boy, you don't know why I'm going through. And blah, 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 blah. Eh? You listen to their story. And then you tell them your story. Well, boy, if you feel your children gain you problems. Boy, I have a little daughter whom they she's not easy. She making it terrible for me. And then the third thing you tell them, Jesus' story. You tell them, I know someone who make my story better. Jesus Christ. He could make your life better too. And by the time you reach the next stand, you win them to Jesus. How many of you all want to go down that road? Show hands. How many of you really love souls? Show hands. I mean, you really, really, really love, love, love souls. Loving souls is loving people. And by the way, this is not religious. This is about having a love. I am here because I love God. I am here not because my name is Frank Porter. I am here because I love God. And God promoted me to be here today so I could share his heart with you. Hallelujah. Dominic Walters, blessed messenger, is here today because he got promoted to share the kingdom. Don't find me rude. But whenever I preach, I do three things. Second Timothy 4, 2, I come to correct, to rebuke, and to encourage. Are you hearing me? When we preach, it be it in the maxi, be it in the church, there's a time when we have to correct people. There's a time when we rebuke them in love. And then there's a time to encourage. Put your hands together for this God who has it all put together. Amen, people? Now, so we have that powerful ministry of reconciliation. And then there's a ministry called humility. And this ministry, Jesus revealed it. Because Jesus, he became flesh. He became as lesser men as mortal men, in order to do what he did for us. I was reading the other day at how I was with my wife studying the word, and I, I just marveled at the story of Jesus when he was born. Jesus was born in a shed. Couldn't find a nice place, but in a shed. And he was put in what we like to call a manger. But it is really the place where they fed the animals. In other words, Jesus was born in the most humble of environments. And it's interesting, he did not, Mary and Joseph did not get to a hotel in a Mercedes Benz. They got there on a donkey. Today, a lot of us in the church, whenever we, we look at these cars being advertised, we want the best. We are not thinking about the best number of souls or the best way to bring people to Jesus. We allow the world to take us and to enfold us and we miss the mark. Am I being rude? I'm just being frank. You're listening. <laughs> All right. So this Jesus is a Jesus who has left us a track record. What I love about Jesus, too, as part of what he's equipped us with, is the ability to heal. Let's look at Mark 16, 17. Mark 16, 17. A few years ago, when I began to take this script here for what it's worth, I became excited in my belly. These signs shall follow they that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Let me tell you something. Every one of us in this room, if we are baptized and we really believe in Jesus, we can have the devil on the run. You don't have to wait for a deliverance service. And a lot of people project this knowledge of Christ, but they're afraid the devil. A relative of mine, 
uh, brought a guy from the United States. He said he was um, a prophet. Sorry, he was an, an apostle. And then I had him stay at a certain place. And my, I received a call from my sister. He said, this place has devil, demons. I've got to go. I've got to go. Find me a place. You are possible, you are pro and you you pray devil, you pray demons. If you truly know Christ, these shines shall follow they that believe. How many of you here have succeeded in using the authority of Christ and sending demons running by way of deliverance? Show hands. It's done. Especially when you're anointing. And one thing I would want to say about revival, revival time assembly, I've just come here to join your company. There's an awesome anointing in this place with your worship. And when there is that, deliverance will always take place. And deliverance is not necessarily laying hands on people and they no, no, no. A person could sit in the seat and they could get totally delivered by the word, by the worship. And also, those people in the worship team, you are deliverers. You deliver people. You don't have to get the opportunity uh, like me to be up here to preach. You can deliver people. Let me tell you something. Huh? Whatever anointing I have, I did not get it in any church. Let me tell you how I got it. I was a teacher at Mukrapo Junior Sect. I had just become a born again believer. And I started something called Eaters We Meet. So every, every day, every school day that is, at break time, it went for 20 minutes. I would invite children upstairs. And the children would come and God impressed me to bring up these snacks. So they don't have to line up by the cafeteria. They used to get the snacks right there. And after a while, they weren't coming for the Sabbath because they were coming for the word. And for 20 minutes, I would sing a song. I was never a big singer. Read the word. And then it started to happen. Children started to get delivered. Children started to get healed. I remember one day the anointing was so powerful. A mother came through the door at break time to see what was going on. And as she put the head inside, the anointing hit her power and she gets slain. Once you put yourself in that place where you want to be used by God, God will use you mightily. And I have news for you young people. Once God finds somebody you could use, you never have enough work. That's my story. I went home just now as I was going up the stairs. I'm a little granddaughter. Grandpa, you're tired, boy. Grandpa, you're tired. But I know I have to come back in the field. And his grace is sufficient. Come on, Jesus. What am I telling you, people? You're not working hard enough. And when you see you work for God, God works for you. Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all else shall be added unto you. Or is money you want? Serve God. Serve God and you'll have more money that you can manage. And you're talking from the, you're hearing it from the horse's mouth. Nah, nah. I can tell you about that. I have been working for the Lord and it's blessing after blessing after blessing. I've come to encourage you, man. Hallelujah. Cast out demons. Speak with new tongue. Don't be scared to speak in new tongue. When you speak in new tongue, the devil runs. Because there's power in the tongue. And may I tell you, there's something called proactive work with the tongue. I remember once, this woman called me. She owns a mall in Port of Spain. She said, Pastor, how are you going? I said, all right. I said, how thing? She said, I just, felt, I just feel the call here. And talk, but we didn't talk much. Within about a minute or so, I say, Here, I just feel to pray. Pray for you. And before you know what, I started praying in tongue. And the whole atmosphere was just vibrating. I could hear on the next end. And then I got out of my office, heading for Rice Road. And then it happened, sister. A guy in front of our vehicle had a, 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 some chairs, those plastic chairs. And the chairs flew off the vehicle, straight in the path of our vehicle. And my driver, like he went berserk, he just went so and went so. 
but God was in advance. We were spared. That time of, that time of prayer, that time of real uh, warfare prayer, although I didn't know what I was praying for, and that's what we were told. The Holy Spirit will tell us to pray for what we don't even know what we have to pray for. And if you're not praying in tongues, ask God. He says it's for everybody. And when you're in a service, always come receiving. While I was ministering here this morning, I heard at least two people babbling. Babbling, getting it out. And once you see you speaking in tongues, you are powerful. And then he goes out. Next, next part of the verse. Still in verse 17. Just roll it a little bit, please. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. Meaning, they shall find themselves literally picking up a snake and nothing will happen to them. Now, I ain't telling you to go and look for a snake. And... But you'll be empowered. And then he says, they shall drink deadly things like poison. And sometimes these things happen accidentally. But then God comes to Why? Because you believe in Jesus. And there's the part of like, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Let me tell you something. When I buy sick, more often than not, I just abuse myself, you know. I would slap my pride and, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Fever gone. Because that's my power. Yes, feel free to abuse yourself. It's best you abuse yourself than keep fattening super farm. You have to say, I have the power. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. And they shall recover. I want to empower you here with the understanding that if we reveal Christ makes you a healer. And young men, let me tell you that. Tell you something. You see, when a young woman finds you anointed, they gravitate to you, you know. You might not have a good-looking face, you know. But when a young woman realized you could heal or you could play the keyboard, I just tell my boys playing the keyboard. I say, not because the girls run in your dog that you get good looking, you know. It's the anointing. <laughs> the day you play the, the pool, the anointing goes. And the girls go too. I, I, am I making sense? The anointing is there because of the grace of God. And by the way, you know what's the anointing? The anointing is a special grace that God has given you. Stand up, my girl. All right, she's one of our Youth for Christ representatives. We have 12 regions in Trinidad and Tobago. I call it our constituencies. And she's in charge of San Fernando and Environ. Vista Bella, Marbella, straight up to Gasparillo. And when you see you bless God, he will bless you. Are you hearing me? The other day when we left the meeting, she said, Pass, I have something to tell you. I think I'm pregnant, you know. I say, wait. So she, yeah, yeah, she called it blessings. It's a blessed thing to have a child. Ladies, if ever you're pregnant, don't let no totish man make you abort it. That is murder. God did not come revealing himself as a great loving God for you to kill a child. Suppose your mother had killed you. I mean, let's be real. I, 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 I don't know how I reach here, but I reach. Some time ago, I preached and I touched on abortion. And how I touched on abortion, I told them that, my God, in Trinidad and Tobago, from the time you look at a murder, you're looking for Enterprise, Lavantil, St. Babs, hmm? you're looking for Hotspot. But there are so many murders taking place in posh places. And let me tell you what, abortion. That politician, gynecologist, Dr. Tim Gopi, three or four years ago said, 
He said during that time that in the previous year, there were 18,000 abortions in Trinidad and Tobago, which means it could have full up the stadium. And God knows. So after I preached that, a woman came to me in tears. She said, Pastor, what are you doing to me? I said, what am I doing? She said, that thing you spoke about a few months ago, I was on Frederick Street, and I saw a figure just pass before my eyes. And it looked like me and my former lover. And then I heard a voice say, he would have been a minister. God keeps records. Look at these lovely children lined up in that row. Come on, little one, stand, stand, stand. Let's salute the goodness of God. Come on, come on, come on. These are little lies that some parents said we want into the world. Beautiful children. Please be seated. My God. You see, I I'm not here to condemn. Because my Bible tells me that if we were to confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So if you've been down that road, he forgive you. But what I'm here to do is to tell you, don't go down there again. And you see that young person who's coming to you seeking that advice, tell them, no, 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 no. God will provide. God will provide. A life is not given to be taken. A life is given as a blessing to humanity. Many a woman has had an abortion and never had a child again. True or lie? True. And it frustrates them. And men, we are guilty sometimes. See me? This hard time, you know. This government time, you know. If you want to go the cost, pay the cost. I want to close with this. That the key to being intimate, the key to experiencing Jesus Christ as the revealer is to be intimate with Christ. Are you hearing me? It means that you must look forward to meeting with Christ every day. You love him up in prayer, in worship. Are you hearing me? You love him up. And once you do, my God, you will be surprised how God will nice you up too. Be intimate with Jesus Christ. His saving grace will expand more and more and more until you wouldn't believe it. God has blessed you immensely. Bow your heads, everybody. My favorite script here is Isaiah 119. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the best of the land. Just, let's bow your head. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anyone out there who do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Remember, evidence of your truly knowing God as your personal Lord and Savior is to be baptized. Acts 2.38 says that we must repent. When, when, when Peter was asked by the crowd, how could we get into this awesome experience? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Christ. And then you shall receive the gift. And you are doing that for the forgiveness of your sin. So, I am asking you. That if you really want to be in this wonderful place. Of being called a child of God. You must be baptized. You cannot just come up to the altar and go back. You must be baptized. Is there anyone here. Who would like to join the throng of people here who have been baptized. You want to be baptized.
today is the appointed time and, and Jesus is telling you my child put up your hand I've been knocking at your door my child come to me if you are yet to be baptized and you want to get the train in motion today put up your hand do I see any hands going up wanting to give their life to Jesus if someone close to you and you love them tell them Jesus love them too and when you touch them, just remind them what you've been reminding them. Give your life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Is, I know we're in the dark and all things, but are there any persons yet to get? All right, let me pray this way. All the people here who are baptized, stand. Everything I And those who are not baptized, to you. You will come to appreciate what the word said. With hope that Jesus is truly coming soon. All the signs are here. All the wickedness, hold all the murders, nothing. all of the stuff that's going on. It's evident that I Jesus is coming soon. But you know what? The Bible says that when he comes, they that are dead in Christ will rise and meet with him in the cloud. And meet, meet with him in the cloud. And they that are left behind, in fact the others who are in Christ, they will then join him. But those who are left behind will go through a time of chaos, confusion, and extreme pain. It will be the reign of the Antichrist. That's when you have to have the number 666. And if you don't have that number, you can't survive. It is said it's a time when women will dare not want to have children. The thing about it, my friends, is this. You don't have to wait for Jesus for that to happen. Suppose you go home tonight. A partner. So many people leave their homes and they never get home. Killed in a murder, killed in an accident. I saw an old man somewhere in Trinidad, shot by a stray bullet. Got up in the morning, good as ever. Shot dead by a stray bullet. We don't know when our number will call. And if we are not ready, we will not spend eternity with Jesus, with God, but we'll spend it in hell. All those of you who are happy, who are standing, you're happy because you made that choice. Show your hand. You're not only happy, you're bright. So those who are seated as a humble brother, I'm asking again, would you like to come to the altar and give your life to Jesus today? Would you, my brother? Would you? You see, I saw that look in your eye. That look that said, I want to, but I'm not strong enough. I even see tears. This is the struggle we have. Come on, there are more people who would like to join. They, come on, come on, come on. This is for you. This is the appointed time. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on. There are others who want to give their life to Jesus. And I'm asking you to come forward and say, Jesus, I want you. Those who might be in the dark, come out of the darkness into the light. Jesus. Is there anybody? Is there anybody still seated? What's keeping your back? A boyfriend? Let me tell you something now. A boyfriend will go and another one will come. It's like a tattoo mark. You put it on your hand and he will leave you with the tattoo mark too. These two lovely girls before me here. Do you want Jesus? Little sisters? Yes. Do you want Jesus? You see, I can't look here, friend, you know, because on judgment day, each individual will be judged accordingly. 
anybody here again what's amazing we have five young men five potentially great husbands thank you Jesus I see wives coming now potential wives thank you Jesus come on thank you Jesus yes 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 I take this thing very serious you know and I follow it up whenever I spend this energy I like to find out how they been baptized because when I die God will be checking me out according to what I did on this earth and if my calling was to lead people to Jesus I have to do it well but I'm doing it in love is there anybody would like to join that group again we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve wow jesus is happy there must be party in heaven let's put our hands together for them wow and they all look responsible Oh, house of revival time assembly I encourage you to encourage young people to give their lives to the Lord you know this morning we had two people to give their life to the Lord one was a legit and the other one was a smart man <laughs> but today we have 12 the thing about old people the older you get is the more difficult to give your life to the Lord so this thing showed that 80% of people who give their life to the Lord do it when they're young you're lying a good number just say Jesus I love you yes anybody else are greedy anybody else in Jesus name are greedy thank you Jesus just bow your head are we going into what is known as repentance mode You're just telling God anything. Thank you, Jesus. Tell God anything that you know is wrongdoing. It could be fornication. It could be stealing. It could be rudeness. It could be being corrupt. It could be unforgiveness. Involvement in witchcraft. Anything that God tells us is wrong and we know it's wrong. If you know you're doing it now, even rudeness to your parent, talk to them. Talk to God. Talk to God. Tell God how much, how sorry you are. And then we will say what is known as the sinner's prayer. Yes, just put your hands towards them. Pray for them. Pray that they should last in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Love you, Lord. Bless you, God. This whole event is about this. So, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're not a fraud, but some of these guys, they're in tears. Because they understand that God loves them. You know, the word is always confirmed. This confirms what was preached. That Jesus revealed himself as a savior. As he said to Zacharias. Salvation, Zacchaeus rather. Salvation has come to your house. 
Salvation has come to their house today. And this is what I encourage you to go back to your church and encourage them. Just encourage them. Is there still one boy or one girl who would like to join this number? There's such a rich anointing here. Come out. Just one boy or one girl. We have 13 people here. And these people, hallelujah, these people, they've come to a place where they know Jesus is the answer. Amen, people? So, just raise your hands, everybody. Just raise your hands. Straight up. When you raise your hands, it, 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 it's a, a connecting with the heavenly. It's a surrender. It's an act of surrender. The last three people, or the last four people, could you have them raise their hands, please? Hallelujah. Say after me, Jesus. Now, uh, we want to shake up this place, all right? You, you, you get a new strength in Christ. Say, Jesus. We love you. This day, I am thankful that salvation has come to my house. And like Zacchaeus, I give myself away. I give all my wrongdoings away and replace them with good things. I want to, 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 to compress that. And like Zacchaeus, I surrender all to Jesus. Keep me, Lord. Strengthen me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Make me a man. Make me a woman that will be a credit to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's put our hands together for them. But before we do, you pray from this end, I pray from this end. We're going to pray for them, and you will pray for them as you see them being prayed for. Amen? We in this thing together. Hey, if I don't do this, I will be disobedient. Everybody sit down. Just one moment. All of you, just face the crowd. Turn around, face them. Pastor, I need to have them all face down. Uh, you guys could use some things. I want three people three different people to adopt a child a, a convert amen I will ask them their name and if you feel moved to pray for them to keep them in the, in the Lord to live lives for the Lord you pray for them amen what's your name Aaron Diaz. I want three people to remember Aaron Diaz in your prayer. You will pray for him. Three people just put up their hands. I see one, two hands, three hands. Good. So Aaron is seen too, all right? Pray for him, all right? If you want to have to get a number. To, in other words, you adopted him like a child. Amen? By the way, I'm doing this in obedience. If I didn't do this, I would have guessed that. What's your name? Emilio Estrada. Emilio? Emilio Estrada. I want three people to pray for Emilio Estrada. I see one hand. I love to see men offering themselves. Yes, sister. Yes, thank you. All right, what's your name, son? Keston Hain. Three people to pray for Keston Hain. That God will keep him. Right, nice. Uh, is there another person we need? Nice, good, thank you. What's your name, son? Antonio. Antonio Jadu. Beautiful. We have one person, two persons, three persons. Excellent. What's your name, sir? Jahir Ramjan. This guy inspired me today. This guy told me that Jesus Christ is alive in the hearts of our young people. When he came here, he was in tears. He was the first to walk up here. Great things are going to happen in your life, sir. Three people to pray for my brother. Nine. What's your name, son? Kerwin. Kerwin Wilson. 
three people to pray for Kerwin Wilson. Thank you. Nice. Kerwin Wilson, remember that name. What's your name, son? Kevin. Kevin Mason came up here. Kevin Mason. Kevin came up here. And when I came here this morning, I thought he was established in this church. Were you here this morning? Yes. I said, uh, here's one that the Lord is using. But when God ready for you, he ready for you. Three people to pray for Kevin. Thank you, Jesus. Read. Son, what's your name? Keon Mason. Is a Mason up here? Could build a house? Yes. <laughs> Keon. Who's going to pray for Keon? Nice. Oh, God, let nice. Give pray for you, boy. You're blessed by... <laughs> what's your name? Destiny. Destiny Branford. Are you from this church? No. What's your name? Hooper Revival. Who would like... Nice. Good. Nice. Yes. Two. One more person. Them boys here, them boys here not bright, you know. I would have snatched this opportunity to pray for this lovely lady. You don't know what the Lord will do. <laughs> What's your name? Calissa Mason. Papa Mason, Mommy Mason should be happy. Who's praying for Calissa? Three people. We have one. And this is why I'm asking for the whole name, all right? Write it in a piece of paper. And you don't know what your prayers might be doing when they need it most, all right? Your first prayer is that they stay with the Lord in the water baptism and beyond. And that God would use them mightily. Amen? Nice. What's your name? Kendra. Kendra Lloyd. Three persons for Kendra. Nice. In abundance. Carissa Nelson. You would know her. All right. Nice. Every person. Do I, did I get three persons? I see two across. Oh, yes, here we have another one. And the big man. What's your name? Jared Chandler. That's correct. Three people for Jared. Oh my goodness, look at hands in the air. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Wow. Let's put our hands together for Jesus, somebody. I want to have somebody leave them so I can conclude this service. Um, is the blessed messenger around? He's almost here. All right, and this give me the opportunity. You have to go this way, guys. This give me the opportunity to give you all an opportunity to go to the next level. You've heard the word. God has Jesus as the revealer of God. Once you have Jesus, you're big. You're powerful. You have the sovereign God within you. But sometimes we need to stir it up. Stir it up. So if you want to go to a next level in your youth group, in your church, show your hands. Beautiful sister. Anybody else want to go to the next level? Show hands. By next level, I mean you want to be no longer just an ordinary Christian going to church. But you want to be an extraordinary one, becoming engrossed in the supernatural ways of God. You see, when you live in the supernatural life, you no longer depend on your intellect. You no longer depend on how bright you are. You no longer depend on degrees, but decrees. You are now in a position you're hearing from God, and when you de decree a thing, it will come to pass. That's the word. So all who put up their hands, put up their hands again. Who want to go to the next level? Stand, please. Show the devil that you want to go to the next level. Just rush up here quickly. Let's make a statement to the devil. That we want to go to the next level. That the devil lost Jesus' his boss. Understand? Blessed is, is very close by. So you, have, you see how God has worked out there? His business first. Then you go have family. Hey, girl, I was blessed by your family. You 
took the physical instrument and placed that we should not be proud of you. God bless you. I'm just going to Oh, boy, this boy will live long, boy. Hallelujah. Me. Just, me just, just leave. I know you think them, all right? This is you know. Nice to see you. God bless you, child. Father God, we're going to pray for you. I just want a female behind the ladies and a male. All right. You, you can do the same. Just pray for those from the, the, the next stand. Wow. Yes. So, Father God, bless her. Bless her. She decides to go further in you. Then reveal yourself in the many ways she would like that revelation. Bless the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Father God, you said you want the young men because they are strong. Here is a candidate, God. Use him mightily, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. My brother, my brother, my brother. God bless you. God keep you. God heals you. As you give yourself away to him, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. And Father, I thank you for this man. This is your son, God. You've identified. Even when he was in his mother's womb, you knew him. And you continue to bless him. Now use him, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Fathers, you've bestowed this wonderful blessing, this wonderful gift. Use these hands and this mind for the advancement of your kingdom work here on earth, God. Let people, let people be set free by the testimony of a service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. My brother, my brother, my brother. God bless you. God keep you, my brother. God continually consecrate you as you avail yourself for service. Be used. Be used and be used well. In Jesus' name. Ever since I'm talking like Paul, from the first time I saw you, I knew you were special for the kingdom. And I confirm this. Touch, touch, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, my brother in Christ, avail yourself, and Christ will use you mightily in this life. Thank you for him, Jesus. Thank you. God says, whenever you are ready, he's ready. God. Bless this young woman with a heart for you that will not be rivaled by anything but your love. Thank you for her, Lord. Touch. Touch. Touch her, Lord. With your life-transforming grace.
the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. Rot to Kuriya na ba? Shikete ye de ba? Kuriya na ba? Tai kete ko koi ka ya? Rika ba ta? Hey 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 ka ya? Shikete ko yo? Ha 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 ha! Hey 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 hey! Ha 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 ha! Hallelujah! She's yours, Lord. She's yours, Lord. Take her. Adios. His tender love is upon you. His, that's your word. His tender love has touched you. The walk. Walk in victory. Wherever you felt that you weren't ready, walk in victory. God of God, let your name be glorified in this life. Meet her at a point of need. She's yours, Lord. She's a young woman ready to be used by you. I did not beg her to come here. She came of her own will. She came to make a statement. She came to tell the devil he's a liar. And you are her Lord and Savior. What's your name? Makini. Makini. Father God, we bring Makini before you. And we use this day to remind her that this day she made a recommitment to serve you with all her heart. All our soul and all in our mind. Bless the Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. That song for you. That song is for you. Are you ready to give it all? Offer it. Offer it. Offer yourself to Him. Offer yourself to Him. And He will take you and use you in a mighty way. And so, Father, this anointed voice you will now use in a way beyond our wildest dream. Get ready. At the count of three, he will give you a fresh One, minister you'll be surprised yes even now even now even now stay up God. stay up stay up God stay up yes it's happening it, it, it's happening it's happening stir it up God store it up She's ready. He's ready for you to know. You are ready for her. Yes, it's coming to you. Now fill, 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 fill up, fill up, fill up. Jesus, there's an anointing that's filling you up to be used for His kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, even as he comes before you, I present him to you as a servant. Servant, that's your word. You are a servant, my brother. Get ready to be used beyond your wildest dream. Thank you, Jesus. See him work in your life. See him work in your life. I give you all of me. Bless the Lord. I give you all of me. Yes, yes, yes. I give you all of me. 
filling up time. It's filling up time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! 